quick revision video on initial rates. So we'll just start with a quick summary of the process and then we'll go into some examples. So you vary the initial concentration of a reactant and if you have other reactants you need to hold their concentrations constant and you measure the initial rate of the reaction, so the rate at the start of the reaction. You then look at the change in initial concentration and see how it compares to the change in the initial rate. So if the initial rate doesn't change when you change the concentration, that means it's zero order for that reactant. If the initial rate changes by the same factor as initial concentration, so they both double for example, then that's first order for the reactant. And if the initial rate changes by the square of the initial concentration factor, so if you double the concentration but the rate quadruples, then that's second order for that reactant. So typically the data will be presented in a table like this. So you can see we've got four experiments and we've got the initial concentrations of A, B and C. So all the reactants. We're also given the initial rates. Now the first thing to say is you can't tell from the chemical equation what the order is with respect to a reactant. So sometimes students think it's first order for A and C and second order to B. It might be, but you can't tell from the equation. You've got to look at the, the link between the changes in concentration and the changes in the rate. So the first pair of experiments we're going to look at is 1 and 2. And hopefully you can see because A and B concentrations don't change. So all we're changing is C, so we can see its effect on the rate. And hopefully you can see that the concentration of C is doubling and so is the rate, so it's first order. The next pair we're going to look at are experiments 1 and 3. So if you just have a track through and hopefully you can see that it's A now that's changing, B and C are held constant at 2 moles per decimeter cubed. You can see that the concentration of A halves and the initial rate goes down by a factor of 4, so it's quartering, so that's second order. And the final pair of experiments we're going to look at are 2 and 4. So you can see that B is the only one changing now. So initial concentration of A is kept at 2 and C is kept at 4. And you can see that B goes up by a factor of 4, 2 to 8. The rate doesn't change, so that's obviously zero order. So now we've got the orders, we can write the rate equation. So there it is in full, and we're going to simplify it to that because b to the power 0 is just 1 anyway. Then you'd normally rearrange for k. So k in this case will be equal to rate over c concentration times a concentration squared. The other thing to remember is the units so even if they don't ask you for the units, you should work them out. So in this case, the units come out as dm to the 6, mol to the minus 2, seconds to the minus 1. So the next example I'm going to look at is one where you can't hold the concentration of a reactant constant. So using experiment 1 and 2, you can see B is kept constant, so we can work out the order with respect to A. So you can see A concentration goes up by a factor of 3 and the rate, not so easy to see using these numbers, but if you just divide the bigger number by the smaller number, it goes up by a factor of 9. So that's a second order effect. So A is second order. So the problem we've got now is the fact that we can't hold the concentration of A constant. So I'm going to use experiments 2 and 3. And remember, we know the order with respect to A is 2, second order. So the concentration of A doubles. So that means that the rate should go up four times. So all I'm going to do is multiply this number here by 4 to see what the rate should go to from the effect of A only. So you can see there it is there. So a fourfold increase in the rate is going to take it to 0.01152. You can probably see the answer now for B, but we'll just finish this off. So now we'll look at B, and you can see that B doubles. And so let's look at the rate now. Well, the rate's stuck at 0.01152 or 1.152 times 10 to the minus 2 in standard form. 
So B is not having any effect on the rate, so it must be zero order. So now we've got that rate equation is rate equals k concentration of A squared. And if we had to solve for k, it would be rate over concentration of A squared. And again, don't forget your units. So they come out at that. dm to the 3, mol minus 1, seconds to the minus 1. So the final one we're going to look at is where you fill in the blanks. And you can see we've been given the rate equations. So we don't have to work out the orders. We're going to use that to work out these missing terms. Now there is a very easy way to do it. You can solve for k in the using the first row of data because we've got everything we need there. And then you just rearrange the equation and solve for the missing term. So you'd solve for concentration of A, for example, for the first blank. The only problem with that is you're not really explaining where your answer's coming from. And if a question asks you to do that, you're very unlikely going to score full marks. So I'm going to show you how I think you should do it. So the first thing I would do is look at how is B going to affect the rate. So we can see it's doubled. It's first order. So the rate should go up by a factor of 2 as well, up to 3 times 10 to the minus 2. And then I would look at what's the rate gone on and done as on top of that. So it's gone up by another factor of 2, up to 6 times 10 to the minus 2 from that. So it's doubled again, so that must mean that A is doubled. So A must go up to 0 0.6. The other way you could look at that is you could say that's a fourfold increase. Well, if that's doubled, that must double as well. So a couple of ways to look at it. Next one, so we can see that this has gone up by a factor of uh, 1.5. So that would multiply this rate by a factor of 1.5. So that would take it up to 2.25 times 10 to the minus 2. So then the next thing I would do is look at how does this number here compare with this number here. So divide the biggest by the smallest. It's a fourfold increase. So it's four times, going to be four times. That will be the new concentration. And so it's 1.2. And the final one where we've got to calculate the initial rate, I'm going to use experiments one and four. So that's a threefold increase. So that's going to take this rate up by a factor of three. So it's going to take it up to 4.5 times 10 to the minus two. And then finally, we'll look at B. B's concentration has doubled, and so that 4.5 times 10 to the minus 2 is going to double again, and it's going to go up to 9 times 10 to the minus 2. Well, the other way you could look at this is you could look at the overall change in concentration. So A has um, trebled, B has doubled, so that's an overall increase of a factor of 6, and so the rate would also increase by a factor of 6, which it does.